Conservatives. Take this. This is for you. DL. And you even admit it. Why conservatives always lose? Let's talk about it from Ricks. Wow. Let's uh, let's give us a look. Once again, Swedish media channel funded by the Sweden Democrats, which is the Swedish far-right party. Uh, let's see. 11 minutes. Go. I'm ready. So I saw this news report a while back that kind of struck a little bit of a nerve in me. And even though this might not be a thing in the media anymore, it made me think of the core differences between liberalism and conservatism. And also why conservatism is losing both in a political and a cultural sense. So let's talk about it. The other day, Unilever announced that they will no longer be using the word normal in their beauty products descriptions. Based. According to Sunny Jane, president of Unilever's beauty and personal care division, this is an Unilever, like one liver? Is that what? <laughs> important step towards creating a more inclusive definition of beauty. Unilever is one of the biggest multinational consumer good companies out there. You might not know the name Unilever itself, but you'll definitely know a few of the 400 companies they have under their umbrella. Bam, capitalism. So what's the problem with them removing the word normal from their beauty products? Well, a lot. And on a deeper level than you might think. So let's talk about why it's a great thing, actually. Body image, negative self-esteem. This person, you know, person speaking right now has made several videos on like, you know, phone bad, social media bad, where they constantly talk about these unrealistic expectations and the anguish it is causing so many people, you know, to have these beauty standards push on them all the time. And what is a stronger beauty standard than a beauty product advertising, you know, to be able to look normal? Body image is super important and having the phrase like norm in general is something that carries an implicit condemnation if you do not meet that given norm and if you aren't at that level or if you don't have that given appearance or whatever really as opposed to just having variations of different things or things that are might be better for you things that might be worse for you so for example we can still, even as a leftist, even as a postmodern neo Marxist leftist, I can still say that, hey, vegetables, better than no vegetables. But there's no point in saying like normal or not. That's just having normal carries a sort of connotation, which is implies like a condemnation if you deviate from that in any way, shape, or form. Not just that, hey, you know, it's cool what you're doing, but it might be desirable to do this. It's that. It's desirable to do this and you are like in normal. You are not what you should be if you don't attain this certain thing, which can cause a lot of anxiety and poor mental health. And this is something that she's acknowledged on multiple occasions previously. Hear me out. Saying something is normal or saying normal. there's such a thing as a norm is seen by the progressives as something inherently bad. They say it excludes people who do not adhere to the norm because putting a norm in place quite literally sets a certain standard. This obviously doesn't have to be a qual qualitative or a substantial standard, of course, but just saying this is the norm, that means that there are going to be instances in which people will not be the norm. They will either fall under it or maybe even exceed it, which means there will be a little thing called inequality. <laughs> And we all know that in the minds of modern people, nothing sounds worse than inequality. This is due to the fact that the left has basically brainwashed us into believing that inequality Whoa. is an inherently unfair thing. Oh, we just took a step in the complete weird direction. So, um, obviously, I sort of sense the direction she's going to be trying to take this in right now. You can absolutely have a norm in some regards just not in in others so for example you should probably have like a a norm a normal procedure for for example like setting up a workplace or court proceedings you should have like a normal course proceeding something that is standard something that is you know like held to um 100 it's not like condemnation of the word normal you know the left's biggest enemy normal Th that's not really it at all um but in certain situations labeling something as normal can be harmful in certain situations it's not it's about, you know, having a nuanced perspective and picking, okay, and this situation is good. And this situation leads to poor, like, mental and, and physical health or whatever. Um, so, yeah. ...basically brainwashed us into believing that inequality is an inherently unfair thing. That's because... So, inequality, 
philosophically, but also empirically, we can demonstrate that this is in multiple ways a very bad thing when it comes to just people's like well-being, likelihood of engaging in criminal behavior, societal cohesion, social trust, democratic practices, uh, health of, you know, like your public health in general, a million and one ways inequality, typically not a good thing. And, you know, you should seek to address certain inequalities should they need to be addressed and certain inequalities, like for example, maybe the fact that people have an unequal distribution of height in society, it's not really something that needs to be addressed, right? So once again, I'm I'm pre-adding the nuance here before she says, oh, well, if the left has such a problem with inequality, then why are they wearing this super fancy clothing, you know, fashion designer, Hassan Piker, TYT associate or whatever, wearing clothes that are different lengths for fashion? Hmm, wouldn't you say that there's an unequal distribution in between the distance of the ending of your scarf and your waist? I thought you were against inequality, curious, because she's bound to make some form of argument like that, that completely lacks nuance. Because they believe that normative thinking is a result of oppressive social constructs, usually put in place by white men to keep minorities small and powerless. If people say that, if they, people say that everything bad in society is in place by white men, then they're just, they're missing the point of intersectionality entirely. Intersectionality is about the way that societal, and cultural attitudes and expressions influence and affect different identities in different ways, shape, or forms. It doesn't seek to blame given social groups for given ailments or say that this is the cause of you, this is your fault, this is your whatever. And if people interpret it in that way, then they're interpreting the point of intersectionality and progressivism as a whole in just a wrong way. The problem here is that that's a completely skewed and dishonest representation of reality. And if you ask me, it even gets to the core differences between progressives and conservatives. Conservatives acknowledge the fact that we as people need norms, rules, and generalizations in order to function, if we want a civilized and working society, that is. That's true. Progressives hate all rules. That's the end goal of progressivism is when there are no rules, no laws, no, no anything. We're just allowed to do whatever you want. That's, that's good analysis there. Conservatives believe that rules exist not because of some sort of oppressive social construct, but because they acknowledge a certain reality. And through trial and error, they try to create order in society so that we as human beings can function. Let me make this really tactile and concrete for a second. Tactile. Ooh, Think about traffic. traffic. Reality <laughs> is that we have cars <laughs> oh, no. and we have pedestrians. So we're already making a differentiation between those two. We know that cars are stronger and more dangerous, so to speak, doing the than thing. pedestrians. So we created rules in order to make one stop for the other at given moments in time, aka through gra uh, traffic lights and different lanes in the streets oh. to take. We also have the police to enforce these rules because if we don't stick to them, what do we get? Exactly. Chaos. Okay, well, I see how this video is going to go. Um, she's going to take a lot of progressives saying that, hey, some rules, some social norms are bad. We should seek to amend them. Some inequalities are bad. We should seek to amend them. Some labelings of normal are bad. We should seek to amend them. Some we don't need to amend. And she's going to take that and she's going to be like, oh, leftists hate all rules, inequalities, and everything that is normal. And therefore, I will think of absurd hypothetical situations in which when these things are applied, when these very true beliefs I've characterized the left as having are applied to other situations in society, society would simply collapse. It is actually, it's hilarious how delusional these lefties and progressives are. But back to a more abstract reflection. Let me take the differences between men and women. Conservatives will say, hey, you're a man, so you therefore generally have qualities A, B, C. And they'll say, hey, you're a woman, so you will therefore have qualities X, Y, Z. And the fact that both of you are different and that you have different qualities makes it pretty normal that you make different life's choices. Progressives, however, will say the exact opposite. What will progressives they say? will tell you that society says that you are different, but actually that it's all a social construct to create unequal positions of power and that there is in fact no differences between men and women at all. So let's abolish all gender norms, roles, and characteristics, and everybody who does stick to them is an intolerant, bigoted, sexist.
Okay, let's talk with this for a minute. So leftists don't say that everything related to sex and gender is just a social construct. Also, she has completely, just completely humble jumble mixed up a difference between a description of what most men, for instance, are today and what most men should be or how we encourage men to be. That's just that piece of nuance has just been completely lost entirely in, uh, in the way she's talking about these topics. What leftists want to do here is the correct understanding. What progressives want to do is we want to just loosen up the gendered expectations and the gendered roles we have for individuals within society. This does not mean that men or women or anybody else for that matter like won't be allowed to do x y or z or will no longer be x y and z it's just you know it's just just widening things up really that's that's all we're really doing it's, it's not that it's not that terrifying or whatever like the the key issue here is that she's just completely separated or misunderstood a differentiation between prescribing what people should be and describing what a lot of people are but yeah another lie from the left yet again the fact that conservatives believe that there is such a thing as a norm obviously doesn't mean we're intolerant to the exception. So we as leftists recognize that there is a norm 100%, but what we're saying is the norm in terms of expectations of individuals tends to result in a lot of negative outcomes in which people aren't able to express themselves in the ways that they would like to and in the ways that would grant them the most happiness. It's not that complicated or scary. Saying Europe's leading religion is and should be Christianity does- She does it again here, okay? That Europe's leading Christianity is and should be Christianity. Doesn't make you an Islamophobe. Saying men and women are and should be different should doesn't be. mean you hate people who don't fully adhere to one or the other. And simply stating heterosexual relationships are the norm doesn't make you think homosexuality is bad. It just doesn't. And Notice how for the last one, she, she got rid of the, um, you know, is the norm and should be the norm as well. Um, but yeah, we, we agree with a lot of the descriptive statements you made, right? You know, Christianity seems to be the dominant religion in Europe. Differences between men and women, we recognize that there exist differences today. But we are questioning whether or not that difference should be socially reinforced. So she's just mixed up the entire should and like is a uh, gap there in its entirety. Basically, a world without hierarchy, gender, and or preferences. I mean, try it. Now preferences are gone as well. Now, apparently, we don't believe in preferences either. I'm learning so much about progressivism. You can't. You'll just end up with a chaotic mush of nothingness. But so why do we conservatives keep losing the fight, both politically and culturally, if this is a really obvious thing to a lot of people. Yeah, we don't believe in anything. How Let me give you some true. examples to why. First of all, we don't have language on our side. Modern day speech and vocabulary lends itself better to the left. The language, it's mean to us. The language is liberal. Grr, the English lexicon actually works for CNN. The English lexicon is actually funded by George Soros directly. And of course, we all know the left has successfully controlled the words that we may and may not use in the public debate for ages. And also, left... <laughs> I'm curious to know what words he's referring to here. Are we talking slurs? Or what are we talking here? Um, because with slurs, hell yeah, I will own that. The left has made it socially unacceptable to call and use slurs in public discussion. I will own this. I will take this hit. I will bite the bullet that you have sent my way, Eva. These talking points just kind of sound better in the ears of modern people. As we've the established coping. in the beginning of this video, words like equality, solidarity, and diversity, they sound modern. They sound honorable and even exciting. The word progressive in and of itself has clearly a positive connotation. Conservative sounds old, outdated, and even backwards in the ears of some people. You got a better name than nerd. It's not my problem you guys picked the shitty label. Come on. But the real question is, has progressivism brought us progress? I mean, take a look at this. This is a building that <laughs> was built in a time period that we call the Dark Ages. And we built that without electricity. 
<laughs> think about it. And then look oh, at this no. building. This is something that we call modernity. <laughs> She's doing the modernity meme. I can't believe this. Oh no. Let's not talk about human development indexes. Let's not talk about democracy. Let's not talk about wealth inequality when progressives are in charge. Let's not talk about social acceptance. Let's not talk about minority protections. Let's not talk about technological advances. You know what we're going to talk about? Building ugly. Progressives. I hope this is a bit. I hope this is a joke. Uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if it isn't. If this is the key argument against progressivism. Old building look nice, new building look bad, new progress, same thing. Old conservative, same thing. Therefore, conservative just like building good, and progressive just like building bad. Easy, logically sound, rational, libtards destroyed. And if you think about it, we have all the technology in the world, and we're building this type of shit. How did we end up thinking this way? That's a pretty cool building, to be fair. Like, I don't know. It seems like a pretty cool building. Well, because language is tied to culture. And the neoliberal right wing couldn't care less about culture. Wait, now we're... So is she arguing against, like, the, like a neoliberal right? Is she not Is she not talking about progressives? Are we just switching topics? She, she'll, she'll, anyone can catch the smoke with Eva. She'll go from... From socialists to neo-Marxists to progressives to liberals to neolibs. Nobody, nobody is safe when Eva's on the podium, okay? Gotta watch out. They'll always argue to leave it up to the market instead. But if you leave it up to the market in a society where people know nothing about where they're from and what their roots are, then you're gonna leave it up to who? The left. And what do you get? Well... You get Netflix shows that glorify suicide, pedophilia, and anti-white sentiment. But at least you can watch it from a massive flat screen TV with the highest resolution possible, right? All from your comfort of your own one-bedroom apartment, which more than half of your paycheck goes into every month. Because your 9-to-5 job gives you just enough money to pay for your expenses, own nothing, and to live happily alone. So now she's making an economic like, critique, which in large parts I agree with. You know, there's a lot of social atomization, wealth inequalities, like large media monopolies, which has had some negative effects on society as a whole. But the statement that as long as we don't do conservatism, we get bad TV shows, you know, it's, it's a bit of a weird argument. Additionally, if you are to measure the effect of like progressivism in general on society as a whole, then measuring it by you know, some admittedly very cringy and bad TV shows probably isn't the most genuine way of, you know, actually addressing a lot of the uh, the effects that progressivism has had on society. So you can go over so many other things, like all the things I mentioned previously for realistic examples. But once again, the reason why it's so easy for her to pinpoint things is because progressivism is becoming more just generally societally dominant and societally prevailing. And when an idea becomes more mainstream and more well accepted, what are you going to get? You're going to get more cringy iterations of it because it's just exposed to more people and just by virtue of aggregates and statistics, some of those people are going to do cringy things with that idea or with that framework or whatever. But that's not a condemnation of the idea as a whole. That's the condemnation of people who are just taking it in a weird direction. Congratulations, you are the perfect consumer. And are Consume. you feeling a little bit alone? Just go on Tinder. Wow. Did you get a date? Have some casual sex. Did you not get a date? Just watch some porn. Are you hungry? Order some foods from Uber Eats and have it delivered to your door by an undocumented migrant. Are you a bit bored? Watch a movie on Netflix. And the next day, you'll just do it all over again. But at least you're free, right? Yes, on the surface, liberalism looks and feels free and sexy because it gives you choices. But our lives are deeply regulated on every single level. And isn't it funny how most of our choices seem to benefit the woke capital every single time? Wait, what? Guys. Activities and systems within capitalism benefit capital. Holy shit. I've been elucidated. How have I not considered this before? It's even in the name. How could I not have seen this? 
She cracked the code! She cracked the code! I don't know if I can stand up to her intellectual rigor. But yeah, now I, I don't know what the fuck we're talking about now. Now we're talking about social atomization, which is a problem um, and should be addressed. This has nothing to do with conservatism or progressivism. You could just as easily address these things through a progressive framework as you could through a conservative one. Um, but... And what about politicians? They can't go out and say, I want you to have less choices even though it's obvious that liberalism is a trap and these are actually false choices. I mean, from something that might sound arbitrary, like removing the word... So what do you mean by, like, less choices? So if you look at, like, the progression just generally of just human progress, you can see that we are, okay, assuming you do it in blocks of, like, maybe 50 years or a century or whatever, you can see that we have, at the moment in time, the greatest availability. And I'm going to do something she doesn't like now. I'm going to do a macro perspective instead of pinpointing individual cherry-picked example, examples. What we see in a macro perspective is that, at this moment in time, we have, despite all the issues that exist with like current like liberalism and you know like capitalist externalities and market failures and all the other things, atomization, we still see that now we have some of the highest rates of, we have the highest rates of like things like class and social mobility ever in human history. Like we have never really like lived in like this period of time at the end of the day. Now that's not to say that there aren't issues, there most certainly is. But when she's trying to paint that the perspective is like, okay, I don't know how many hundreds of years or how many decades she wants to go back. But if you look at one of the most important metrics of like having choices and having opportunities, at least in my opinion, you know, social mobility is a pretty good metric or a pretty good indicator of that. Um, we see that we're doing fairly well in that relative to how we've been doing previously, not relative to what we can attain, because I'm sure we can do a lot better with that. Um, but yeah. Normal from beauty products and banning plastic straws. We go to the government dictating when you're allowed to leave your own house and what you can and cannot say on social media is regulated by big tech. So I am mad that the government has powers during wartime and crises. And I'm mad that private companies can do what they want with the tech that they own and that they developed. There are certainly problems with tech and regulations that could be put into place and certain protections. But yeah, you need to suggest those and actually talk about solutions rather than just hand waving at this issue, issue, you know. Think about how many things in life are actually being decided for you without you having a say in it at all. I know for a fact that many people do feel this. They feel something is off. So many people Alienation. feel lost right now. And maybe without being able to pinpoint it exactly, most people deep down feel like they're missing something. A sense of meaning and a sense of belonging. But many people don't even know how to put this in words, let alone actions, or they are afraid to. Because the social consequences are real. The left is incredibly organized and has a global agenda. Conservatives, on the other hand, usually are fragmented and debate each other on the smallest nuances. Oh yes, <laughs> the famously monolithic, non-fragmented, non-infighty left. That's good. I'm, I'm happy to know that this person is so familiar and in touch with what, uh, what leftist movement looks like. Um, it's not like the left is at all famous for you know, infighting or being hyper-fragmented or debating the small nuances of topics or anything. And I mean, that's a good thing. That's how you get closer to the truth. But it can therefore also be hard to come out as a conservative because you'll often stand alone and you might even lose friends, sometimes even family. Because other than conservatives, the left is in fact highly intolerant to the exception. I don't think I've ever met a conservative who said, oh, you're a terrible person for thinking differently than I do. Or, <laughs> ooh, I really- Have you met conservatives? Yo, I don't know, like, what fairy tale I'm existing in. Am I in the same reality anymore? Have I gone through, like, a portal? Am I here? Am I wrong, chat? Have I, have I logged into the wrong reality today? Or, like, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> never seen prejudiced or biased conservatives ever you know they're all so welcoming and so accepting and so tolerant of everything ever yep you got that right on the nose oh yeah also this is like legit cult behavior 
you may lose friends, you may lose family, you may lose all your social connections and become isolated and rely on our videos for your only sense of interaction, literally engaging or encouraging the type of behavior that would lead to more atomization and more alienation. But hey, it's worth it because you are right and you know the truth. This is legit cult behavior and also like key abusive like tendencies and symptoms you cut off as many like external sources as can as many like familiar connections as many other interactive measures you have and just hyper focus and get caught in the echo chamber and pipeline of like this type of rhetoric and these type of like right-wing ideals additionally i find it super funny that they're just like hey you know you might lose friends or family but that's okay because you're fighting the big fight in a literal video about people becoming more lonely and not feeling like they have a sense of community or whatever they're actively encouraging people to like spot belief systems that will get them like ostracized or whatever um but even to that extent like you know their characterizations of how ostracized conservatives are is, is far from reflective of reality at least in my opinion sweden democrats was like the third most popular party in sweden for like a while we have a large like right-wing conservative bloc here in sweden and in so many other countries like this notion is just ridiculous or oh i really don't want to be your friend anymore because of your political opinion opinions it just doesn't happen but god knows it just the doesn't other that just don't make fun of people i guess damn I don't even know how to argue with this. You're around, this is just it happens all the delusion. time. And trust me, I understand it's scary to go against the status quo. But you have to. Whilst the left have equality, solidarity, Cult's and behavior. diversity to offer, Literally cult conservatism behavior. strives for the good, the true, and the beautiful. <laughs> and honestly, words, conservatives have more fun. We won't cancel you for a joke that you made over 10 years ago. We are not afraid to speak our minds. You will have more fun. <clears throat> unless you're a liberal, you're a progressive, you're any left-leaning, you're a minority, you're LGBT, you're an ethnic minority, you're a racial minority, you talk about any social ills, you complain about inequality, you want to reform society for the better, you have an interest in just generally making people access, having access to more opportunities and doing what they want in their life, unless, you know, unless you fall into one of those like small little bubbles um you will be you'll be fine here in, in in conservative land and we like the finer things in life we're already winning in our private lives but now is the time to take it to a societal level so go against the status quo create beauty and emphasize the best parts of a conservative mindset the best part of the right videos you have Coming thousands up. of years of history on your side let them have their Netflix shows, gender neutral toilet, and Give me that fashion indoctrination to the high BDM win. music. I'm ready. Right. See, I'm repping. I'm repping for Rick's, for the Eurocentrism with my white as fuck dance moves. Damn, I can't believe this.